Hey guys there, it's Jobwise Jones here. This video is for dental assistants and people who are thinking about becoming dental assistants. At Jobwise Jones, we did a survey about a year and a half ago for DAs. I'll be using DA for the rest of the video to say dental assistant. Uh, for DAs, we surveyed about 250 DAs from around the nation, asking them what advice you know would they give to people coming into the profession to understand uh, before they get into the profession. Basically advice from those who already have been out there in the field. Uh, I myself am not a DA. I am a hospital administrator, but I do videos for many different types of tech schools and things of that nature. I also do interviews for many kinds of uh, tech schools as well, which always includes DAs, MAs, uh, mechanics, things of that nature. So let's get right into it. So the first thing we got, the first thing I received was the biggest issue was for people getting into the DA field who are already from, who are already DAs, right? They try to tell you guys what you need to have. The first thing is going to be communication. You have to be really good communicators. You have to understand a message from uh, your boss, your fellow colleague, the dentist, or whoever. And you want to be able to execute that communication precisely because this is where a lot of offices get into frustrations at each other, frustrations at the job because they're not communicating properly. Meaning that sometimes if you're not sure of what you've been told, double check that. If you're telling somebody something that they need to do, make sure they understand what you're saying while you're being respectful about it, okay? So if you're not a good communicator, you need to think about that before you become a DA, but communication is what something you can work on. The biggest deal about communication is being able to listen. So if you're so busy in a field that you don't stop to listen to what's going on, you could hurt the patient, you could hurt yourself, and you could also hurt the, the facility where you are because you might get sued, which could lead back to showing you we're not listening uh, uh, to a certain order or to a certain uh, procedure or whatever, right? So the first thing they want you to know is to make sure you are a good communicator. That's from the experienced people already out there for the Job Wise Jones survey. Number two is scheduling problems. They say this a lot. Sometimes the schedules are overbooked, right? And sometimes they're underbooked. So when they're overbooked, you gotta look at how to manipulate those patients in the right area, how to deal with a lot of patients at one time, who has a priority, um, who doesn't have a priority, you know? So if you, sometimes they say that you should print the schedule out a week or two weeks if you can ahead of time and post it in the back so everyone knows what's going on for the next week. This way, everybody's on the same page, in the same boat, rowing the same direction. This was a huge issue for a lot of the experienced DAs who want to let new DAs know about the field. Scheduling's an issue. Under scheduling could be a big deal too because then you might have more time on your hands and not sure what to do with that time, right? And you might look like the one who is being lazy and you don't want to be called that while you're a DA either, okay? So if you're going to go into the field, remember that scheduling is an issue and you really want to make sure you take the advice from the people who read to me about their biggest issues about being DAs is the scheduling. You should probably most likely try to get on board with the schedule one week ahead of time. Therefore, it takes away some of the headaches. Not all the headaches, of course, because every job has their headaches, right? But that's a big issue, the scheduling. The third one is you, got, you need to deal with patient anxiety. And they say that, when I say they, I mean the experienced people who participated in the survey said that when people are anxious when they come to the dentist, which most are, they say, is that you have to know how to communicate, but also be compassionate with people and be empathetic with people and non-judgmental because you're going to see some pretty bad cases of, of of diseases in the mouth, you know, teeth and this and that, right? So for sure, you don't want to be judgmental. I'm sure most of you understand that, but you have to have a sense of compassion within your heart to say, you know what? I feel for this person. This isn't just a patient. This isn't just a number. This isn't just a money, right? This this is a person who has had some dental issues and they're there to see you and your team to fix the issues. So make sure that you have within you compassion. You know, you, you think, oh, that's not hard. A lot of people don't have compassion. A lot of people are not 
made that way. A lot of people just don't have that within their within their aura, within their persona, to be compassionate to others. Now, the experienced DA said that. They said that you have to have a sense of compassion or you shouldn't be a dental assistant. And that makes a lot of sense, you know, because you're gonna have a lot of people there who are hurting, who are embarrassed, right? And you wanna be the one that's gonna be the one who's non-judgmental, who's gonna take them in, uh, listen to them, um, help them out, you know, I mean, you're the one for, for that. You're the one to help them out with those issues, okay? So make sure you have some kind of sense of compassion within your aura, within your persona. Another thing too is late patients are last minute consolations. Now, this was a big deal for a lot of the uh, experienced people who wrote to me and who participated in my survey. This was almost tied with patient anxiety because <clears throat> They said that some of their colleagues who are dental assistants do not call the next day to confirm a patient coming in uh, for the, the next day, right? They, they don't call on Thursday to confirm who's coming in on Friday. So Friday's like a, well, wait, we hope they come in, you know? We hope they, re they remember. We hope that they cancel. But a lot of people don't cancel appointments, right? Even if you put a fee on there, <clears throat> if you don't cancel, you pay this. A lot of people will still not, not call sometimes. They just forget because life is busy, right? And so some of these offices suggest using a, a text a texting app, you know, where it, it will text a patient two days before, one day before, hey, your appointment's here, hey, your appointment's here. But this was a big issue with, with other fellow dental assistants who do not call or confirm the patient for the next day or even the next two days. Because what this does, this causes havoc in the, in the schedule. It causes havoc in the jobs. Say you're preparing for a procedure for a patient, you get everything ready, and then they, there are no-show. That causes issues, right? There, the severity of the no-show is, is harder if you're not even trying to call them the day before. Now, if you call the day before, they say, yes, I'll be there. Well, then if they don't show, then eh, it's still bad, but it's not as bad. Plus, it also shows you that you had enough foresight to understand to call the patient to make sure they come in or have the front office call. Somebody make contact to remind that patient about, hey, you got an appointment tomorrow, you know? The last one I wanna talk about is the respect for the profession. This is growing, I see this now. This was number 68, so 68% of the people mentioned this part. So respect for the profession. And so dental assistants are making more and more uh, social media posting, shall we say, on Instagram, Snapchat, whatever. But many of them, and they don't want their names mentioned, but many of them feel that some DAs are making a bad name for DAs, you know, because they're posting crazy stuff or things of a sexual nature, drinking things, whatever, you know. And and yes, you know, when you're off work, you're free to be who you are. And they, they understand that, but they ask that, please keep this profession Professional, <clears throat> professional, even when you're not at work. And I can understand that because no matter what career you, you're in, you always want to make sure your colleagues and yourself represent your career in a professional manner, right? And so they, they do worry about that. They say that some of these, of these postings they see on Facebook and things are so unprofessional and terrible. And then they say DA, dental assistant somewhere, you know, and they, they are asking to always Remember that you are a professional, even when you're not at work, you're still a professional and you still represent millions of other people who are in that career field and they don't want to smear it with nonsense. So those are the top five, you guys. So you got to watch your social uh, postings if you're going to be a DA, just a courtesy. It's not a command, it's not an order, but it's a courtesy. So if you're going to get into the dental assistant profession, that was advice from a survey of 250 dental assistants I took over the past year and a half. <clears throat> Those are things they wanted me to relate to new dental assistants, what to look out for and what to be part of and how to do your job more proficient, okay? So I hope this helps you guys out a lot because this came from real people in the field, not from a school, not from some guy in the street. This came from real people, a survey done by Jobwise Jones, me, and I got the information from actual people in the dental assistant field, all right? Well, you guys, thank you, and take care, and have a good day. Bye.